In 2020, Idaho was rattled by the biggest earthquake it had seen in almost 40 years. The quake was originally thought to have happened along the known sawtooth fault line, but now new research shows that might not be the case. Sophia Bliss from our Environment Northwest team shares details on a newly discovered fault. It's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> I felt a little cheated, but uh, my daughter was in the basement of our house about five blocks from me. And she called me and she she said, did you just feel a rumble or something? And I said, no. Dr. Glenn Thackray. I'm a professor of geosciences at ISU. And Dr. Zach Lifton. I'm a PhD. You don't have to call me doctor, but um, sometimes goes at the end of my name. Yeah. I am a geologic hazards geologist at the Idaho Geological Survey. At the center of their research is the 6.5 magnitude quake that rattled much of Idaho. And then the next thought was just which fault was it? Um, you know, because that, that's a question that's on my mind a lot. You know, what are the, what are the faults that could impact uh, Idaho? The epicenter of the earthquake was near Stanley and the Sawtooth Fault, which are known to have seismic activity. That's about 50 miles west of where the largest earthquake ever recorded in Idaho happened back in 1983 the 7.3 magnitude Bora Peak quake. Even though there's seismic activity across this general area, pinpointing which fault line is responsible is difficult. So in March of 2020, we assumed it was on the Sawtooth Fault because it's it was located very close to the Sawtooth Fault. But close isn't confirmation. Geology is is a puzzle and we don't always have a clear picture of what's happening. You know, we have little pieces and can be pretty ambiguous and we just do the best we can to put it together with, with what we've seen. So researchers headed out to see more. They use the data from aftershocks and LIDAR imaging to see details of the ground surface and pick a site for their study. And this gray area that um, stands out a little is the LIDAR. And LIDAR is a really important tool for doing this kind of mapping. Then they dug a trench across the Sawtooth Fault. And so by digging a trench across it, we can look at the soil layers that are um, exposed in that trench and try to decipher what's the history of earthquakes on that fault. How big are they? How often do they happen? Where do they happen? Dr. Lifton says this was the first trench ever dug on the Sawtooth Fault. That's kind of the gold standard for understanding a fault's history. Through their research, they found that the earthquake did not happen on the Sawtooth Fault. And the fault that we think caused the Stanley earthquake is not quite in the same place. Which is not what they were expecting to find. The Sawtooth Fault intersects with a different fault system that we know very little about. Their research led to the discovery of a new fault line, one they hope to study even more. So it's a very exciting time up in that area because there's there's now a lot of attention on on these, really, these two fault systems. From a scientific point of view, being able to study these things is exciting. Um, Stanley earthquake was great because it didn't hurt anybody. Um, so in that case, um, we can learn a lot about that, maybe apply that to other places and, and maybe try to help people. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Sophia Bliss. Be sure to join us tomorrow night. Our Environment Northwest team will take a closer look at a spike in earthquakes in Washington this year and hear from experts about whether the quakes could foreshadow something bigger.